Hi everyone, uh, I thought I'd offer a hopefully a uh, quick video to just kind of walk through the different guidelines and expectations for those discussion posts. Um, since those are assignments where we will have most of our weekly points in, in many of our weeks, uh, I think it's important to just walk through that so you know what to strive for um, and what the grading expectations are. So I am going to walk through the rubric with you here. It will be posted in that content area of D2L where all the other important documents for our class you know, will be located. So if you look at the rubric, it's just set up in kind of a straightforward way where on the left hand side is that column that offers the grade. So if you are seeking an A, you want to be, you know, following these expectations um, and getting this you know, points range. So uh, we will have different points offered in different weeks. We are going to build up to those larger point grades. Um, so I've tried to give you a nice range here. So if you want an A and we're, we're out of 15 points, you know, you want to be between 13.5 to 15. If we're working with a 20 point grade that week, you know, you want to be between 18 and 20. Um, and then if you scroll down, we have, you know, all the expectations and information for a B grade. The second page contains the C and the D. We should be staying away from these. There's no reason to even look at them essentially because we should not be striving for those, right? Uh, I I am hoping that everybody's going for an A, you know, or of course a B or a C. You know, it just depends on your motivations, right? So we also have a, a column here that's about categories uh, for the expectations. So when we're thinking of content. We want to make sure if we're going for that A, right, that your content adheres to the prompt, um, especially if there are multiple questions. So if I'm asking you to think about several things, make sure you're going through and double checking. Did I answer this? Did I answer that? Right. We want to make sure that you're hitting all of those notes. Your ideas are well structured and clear. If research is required, you know, those quotes are incorporated clearly, you're giving the proper credit. We're going to talk more about that as the weeks progress when it comes to things like MLA. Um, but just, you know, thinking about these things a little bit ahead of the game. Um, and then meets the minimum length requirement. Um, typically, I will let you know this each week, but if I just say write two paragraphs about this, we should be in that range of at least four to five sentences for a paragraph, and even more if we are incorporating research, so six to seven sentences. And that's only because if you're including quotes, you need to introduce the quote, explain the quote. It takes much more space to do that, right? But I'll let you know if research is required for, for a particular post. So we're moving into the formatting section, obviously. Um, and then we get to the UGG stuff. And the UGG stuff is more of that you know, the surface level, you know, the work reflects student proofreading and self editing. It's free of those surface level issues, right, which would be caught in this phase, right, in the proofreading and editing. Uh, very, 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 very few gr grammatical issues. And then, of course, thinking to the you know, your responses and those things require two thoughtful, well-organized responses to other students with at least a paragraph of four to five sentences or more if required. If there's a particular week where I stray from this and I say, okay, let's let's shoot for more engagement, respond to three people or four people, the same expectations are there. So it's going to take a little bit more effort and more time, but I'm likely going to be awarding a higher grade for that kind of work. Uh, but what I really want to emphasize is that section, I call it UGG stuff because it's it's tedious and that's the part of writing that most of us have some struggles with. None of us are grammar experts. None of us are spelling experts. We may have some great spellers out there, um, but we need to work on that. But in terms of working on it, just use the resources that are available to you. There's no reason for you to have the expectation that when you write, your grammar will be perfect or, hey, I need to make it perfect. We have tools at our disposal. So if you're using Microsoft Word uh, to work through your ideas, which I always suggest, so you can save it just in case, um, Use the spell check feature, use the grammar check feature. They're not perfect. You, they're not going to catch everything or they may catch things that you know are correct, but it's a good place to start. I also encourage students to, if you want to use Grammarly, I know there are some professors who don't want, you know, you shouldn't be using that. It's a crutch. I don't really understand that mentality because we should not, like I said, have to be experts in these areas. So use those tools. No, I don't want people writing your work for you. I don't want to program writing for you. But if you're using those things to check your own work, why not? 
Um, I also want you to note that you're, if you're using something like Google Docs, you have spell and grammar check options there. Use them, right? Use all the things that are available to you. And I want you to note that even if and you shouldn't be doing this, please don't do this, but if you are, um, if you're just writing directly into the text box in D2L, there is a spell check feature available for you there, which I'll show in another video, but you have these resources, you might as well use them. Our focus in this class is definitely not going to be about um, grammar and spelling. Those are things to be addressed in previous courses, but I understand that we still have some struggles with that. We all do. I do. Everybody. But um, my grading is more based on the effectiveness of your ideas, are your ideas coming across clearly, that kind of information. But if you have grammatical or spelling errors that are detracting from the effectiveness of what you're trying to communicate, that's when it starts to have an effect on your grade. If there are grammar issues throughout a sentence or a paragraph, it's going to make it hard for people who are reading it to understand your ideas. So we want to make sure that everybody reading your work, whether it's your colleagues who are going to be responding to you um, or it's me who will be grading, you want to make sure that your ideas are, are clear and effective. You all have great ideas. Just make sure that we can all you know understand them without the, the grammar and the spelling issues. So again, use those tools that are available to you. I'm going to pull this up again just to scroll down to let you know that when we're working with different grades, it's just kind of, so we have the A, right, which is we're striving for that, hopefully, and then the B is just doing a little bit less than what's included in the A, but we have the points range here, we have the categories, um, you know, mostly adheres to the prompt, particularly if multiple questions are posed, ideas are well structured, you know, it's still you know, mostly getting into the A area, just with a few detractions, right? And then the C is going to be the same. It's it's almost that B, you're almost getting that, but there are some things that are missing, right? So when you have some time, please take a look at this rubric just so that you um, are moving forward with those discussion posts with these things in mind. Um, I also want you to note that when you see grades uh, for your discussion posts, for those weekly discussion posts, the first thing to do if you have questions is to just review this rubric, just to say, okay, let me double check. I got a B. I really think I should have gotten an A, but if you go through and see some of the expectations, it might um, offer you kind of reminder. Oh, I didn't answer every aspect of the prompt, or oh, you know, my paragraphs were a little bit too short. It's just you need to convey your ideas as effectively as possible following some of these kinds of guidelines and expectations. Okay, If you have any questions, please feel free to post in the Q&A portion of our discussion board in D2L, um, or you can always shoot me an email. As I will continue to say, if you have a question, it's likely that other students are going to have questions as well, so posting in that anonymous Q&A area is going to help everybody out. All right, take care, and again, let me know if you have any questions.